What's going on? In this video, I'm going over my installation of the Stage 1 off-the-shelf tune from Cobb on my 2017 WRX with a CVT transmission. So all of this applies to years 2015 plus. I'll show you where I placed my access port, what the install looks like, and give you a review of the effects of the tune on your car. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you is kind of where I placed it and how I routed the cable and then I'm going to show you you know how I did this part right here and then the final product but right now I want to show you the cable so here's the cable right here I wanted to be able to put the access port in there and then pull this out to use it just like that and plug it into the access port and then when I'm done I wanted to be able to push it back and be done with it just like that so it's kind of out of the way and unobtrusive so that's what I did and I accomplished that so I'm going to show you where the cable is down here Part of the shakiness there's no room down here so all right so I'm underneath and here's the OBD port right there okay and let me show you the cable okay there it is so see this that's what it's doing this in here just make sure if you do this that you have enough room and that you're not bothering anything so all I did is I pulled it out to the length that I needed it and then I zip tied it right there then I routed the rest up and through all these cables and then, you know, I just zip tied it down here, underneath this kick plate here, and I just zip tied it. I took the rest, the rest of the cable, the bundle, and I put it right there, zip tied it, ran it back up, and onto the OBD port. So it's plugged in and completely out of the way. And obviously, if I want to dis disconnect it, I could just unplug it. If I want to plug in something else on there, I could just unplug it and maybe tuck it in here or something. So that's what I ended up doing with it. All right, let me show you what I did here. I didn't want the access port cable just dangling in this big hole in my dash like that. So what I did is I took out the button that was there and I just drilled a little hole on the corner right there. So let me show you how that's gonna go. So the cable basically will just rest just like that in there. That way I can put the button back. See, like, you can't, you can't see it now because the button's there. But, like, when the access port's being used, this cable will go up, and when not, I can retract it. So, I wanted to show you the finished product. You know, where you place the access port is entirely up to you. It really is a matter of preference, and you can put it just about anywhere you want. So, I didn't want to put it on this side because I already have... You know obviously the stereo and then my phone goes right there and it's just kind of busy and i just didn't want that another distraction on this side of the car so i decided you know right here would be the best spot i also didn't want it on the windshield so i thought right here would be a, a good spot you know i can easily see it from up here from the driver's perspective and it's kind of out of the way so here's the access port right here so i'll show you what it looks like you just you know put it on there that's it then you, you grab the dongle right here that I showed you earlier what I did with it, right? You grab it and pull it out and plug it in. Obviously, you do it with both hands. I'm holding the phone with my other one. You plug it in and that's it. When you're done, you, un you know, unplug it, pull out the access port and push the cable back. And that's what it looks like, you know? That doesn't look bad at all to me. So that's just one idea. You could do, you know, just about anything. Some people like to put it you know right right here some people put it right in this spot right here others put it you know on the other side right here like right here uh and some other people get you know they get the suction cups and and they'll put it up there on the windshield entirely up to you i think this is the spot that that i actually um settle for and like quite a bit so there you go that's what i did so once you get the access port you have to register on the cob website it's a pretty simple process and it allows you to download the access port manager which is the app that allows you to update the firmware on the access port itself and you do that to make sure that you have all the latest maps and the corresponding revisions it took me about five minutes and it's a pretty straightforward process so after you upgrade the firmware and the access port and make sure you have all the maps that you're going to need inside of it it's going to be time to install the tune in the car it's a very simple process and i'm about to show you right now but there's a couple things that you got to keep in mind if you have 
a battery tender connected to the car right now. If you don't have it, make sure your battery is healthy and charged. In other words, you know, don't just like do this after the car's been sitting for a month and your battery is weak. And the second thing is put the car in the on position beforehand and make sure your things like your AC is off and your stereo and your lights and stuff like that. That way when you turn, put the car in on for the for the access port to flash the tune, then all that stuff is already off, so you don't have to do it. So let's get to it. I'm gonna hit the power button. I'm going to wait a few seconds for the access port to turn on. We're basically following directions. This is actually very simple. So we're going to hit OK to just carry on here. It's going to give us two options, install and troubleshooting. We're not interested in troubleshooting. That's for code reading. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the middle button to select install. All right. So again, at this point, the key is in my hand, so it's not in the ignition yet. I'm just waiting to follow directions. So verify that ignition switch is in the on position. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. On position. So once you do that, you give it a couple seconds. And I'm gonna, go, oh, there it goes, it found it. So please confirm that your vehicle matches the identification results. So 2017 automatic WRX, you know, with a CVT. So yes, that's my car. I'm gonna hit okay tells me please wait all right so this part right here is very important because this is where you select the map that you want to flash on your ECU and you want to make sure that you flash the, the proper map that's going to match the fuel that you're going to be using and the parts installed in your car so I know that I have 93 octane gas in my area it's ready readily available so I'm going to flash the map for 93 and once I do that, I basically commit myself to only using 93 in the car because it's a aggr more aggressive tune that expects that 93 octane rating. I'm also only going to flash the stage one tune, not this, not the stage one plus, which is the tune for the intake. Since I don't have the intake yet, uh, I'm only going to do in the stage one. So I'm going to scroll down to find that map. Version 302 is what we need for this year car. So stage zero, stage zero would be the stock tune. All right, here we go. Stage one, 91, that means that you're supposed to use 91 or above. I don't want that, right? I want stage one, 93, version 302, that one. So the one right, right below it is the high wastegate version of it. Uh, for right now, what we need is that one, stage one, for 93 octane fuel version 302 for this car 2017 so I'm gonna click on that and that's the warning I was telling you about battery charger is recommended I've done this like several times so every time that I've done it the car has seemed a little weaker turning on after doing it so if you have a battery charger make sure you connect it hit OK and we just basically wait now All right, so now it tells me to turn off and leave the ignition in the off position. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to off. Leaving it off. All right. And I'm going to hit continue after I do that. So now I'm waiting again. We're almost done here. So once it reaches 100, which is about to, well, might as well let it finish. All right, so please turn the ignition key to the on position so the access port can begin the reset procedure. So that's what I'm doing. All right, now that it's on, I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Notice at no point here we're turning on the car. We're just hit, hitting the on position and leaving it there. All right, installation successful. Please turn the key ignition to off for at least 15 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take it, take the key out of the ignition for 15 seconds or so, and then we're gonna turn back the, the car back on. Okay, so in preparation for this review, I decided to uninstall the Stage One Tune because I've been driving around with the Stage One Tune for several months, and I wanted to be reminded of how the car used to feel because you tend to just get used to things and I wanted to be reminded of how the car used to feel and let me tell you that it just validated the fact that 
this car really benefits from a from a tune so you might ask yourself why isn't it the car like that from the factory and the short answer to that is that all car manufacturers have very stringent emissions requirements and Subaru has to balance those emission requirements with giving you a sporty car it's something that's hard to do and the way that Subaru does it is by giving you that boost early by shortening the amount of travel that the gas pedal has to do to get to uh, a certain point and by giving you modes within the with the drive modes so the sports mode up until that you push the gas pedal 30 percent in sports mode the car behaves like a cvt so you can it's subdued you can drive it around town and it's economical once you hit that 30 percent the car goes into stepped mode and that's when it's simulating a traditional transmission and it does the same thing on intelligent mode only up to 40 percent rather than 30 percent so when you combine that with the boost kick at the lower RPMs and the unpredictability of the gas pedal, you basically get a, a jerky experience if you don't know what you're doing. It takes a long time to get used to it. Once you put the stage one tune and install it in your car, it's only then that you really realize how the car could have been. It's much more pleasant, much more linear. Now the car, you know, zero on the gas pedal is zero, 100 is 100. Um, you have a much more controlled and predictable uh, boost release right the car is just much more manageable when when you hit the gas and you you hit it in a linear way and you kind of just keep going you have a very satisfying pull to it whereas before it could kind of just go go and you're like what the hell is the car doing and next thing you know the turbo will kick and you'll 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 be you know pushed back in your seat and you're like holy crap it's like somebody else was driving instead of you that's the way it used to feel well that's gone so it's much more predictable now when you hit the gas it goes it goes when you want it to go the car has a very satisfying pull all the way through so before you used to have this kind of flat spot right after 4,000 rpms or so so you would you would pull and the car would kind of feel like it would slow down a bit once you hit 4,000 rpms well that's kind of gone now it kind of just pulls all the way through much better car altogether and this is from an off-the-shelf map once i actually get a pro tune i think that's going to get even better but the point is there's a lot of power locked up in the emissions requirements that Subaru had to abide by. So as far as power goes, you can't expect much improvement from a stage one tune. Like you're not gonna get loads of power. So it's a subtle increase across the entire RPM range. I improved my zero 60 times by maybe half a second or so. And uh, so, you know, it's barely noticeable. Um, and I did that by using launch control. Cobb added their own launch control sequence where you push the cruise control and it basically puts the car in, in their own version of launch, launch control. I tried it out, I didn't like it, it was, it was kind of odd to me. I just used the standard one that comes with the car and it, it worked fine for me. That's how I was able to achieve the fastest time. So the car's down, for me as, as it is right now, is down to about 5.5 seconds to, to 60, but it's fine. Everything else in the car remains the same. So you're still gonna have you know, sports sharp, sports mode, intelligent mode, they're still gonna behave the same way. Like I said before, you're still gonna have those, uh, that shift from CVT to uh, traditional transmission in sports and intelligent. You're still gonna be able to put the car on manual mode on each and every one of those. You're still gonna have your launch control. Everything will remain the same. And there's gonna be no indication that the car is tuned at all, other than the way that the car feels, the drivability of the car. So. A couple things to keep in mind make sure that you're putting the proper gas in the car the car is very responsive to the gas that you put in it that's why the tune that you put in the car that you end up installing has to correspond to the gas that you're gonna be using when you install the tune so once you install your tune in your car if you have the the Cobb access port tune and you know put the Cobb access port up and monitor things like your dam monitor feedback correction fine knock learning things like that it will give you indications if your car is is you know playing well with a tune and once you're comfortable with that take the access port and put it away you know forget it because you can go crazy monitoring all those things on a daily basis and it's just unnecessary another important thing to keep in mind is that the tune you know more than likely will avoid your warranty if you have to make a warranty claim and it's proven that you tune the car then 
they can very easily deny your warranty claim. That's a risk that you have to take as a consumer, right? As an enthusiast, if you buy the car, you have to take that risk. If it's something that's worth it to you and you think you can benefit from installing a stage one tune and you're willing to deal with the consequences if something goes wrong, then you know I think it's definitely definitely a beneficial mod to the car. So that's it. I hope this video answers all your questions of the Cobb Access Sport Stage 1 tune on the 2015 Plus WRX with the CVT transmission. I just got the Cobb intake in the mail and I'll be installing that very soon, doing a how-to video and installing that map. And I'll probably do a review video on that and show you if there's any difference in that as far as power and the way the car handles and behaves after I install the Stage 1 Plus. The Plus is the one with the intake. So. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. If this was useful to you, support the channel by liking the video and subscribe to see my future content. Take care.